Welcome to Tech Brothers the Dhamera. In this video we are going to learn how to load all text or CSV files to single text or CSV file from a folder. So think about a scenario where we have multiple files sitting in one source folder and we would like to create a single CSV or text file from those files. Here I have only two files. Let's open that and take a look. Here I have ID and course name and I have the two records here and the other file that uh, has the same columns uh, but different data. So we have two records here. We would like to create uh, one uh, CSV or uh, text file from these two uh, files. So tomorrow, maybe you can have more files. Maybe hundreds of files are sitting in your source folder and you would like to create uh, one file from there. Uh, this is source folder and we would like to create the file in the destination folder. So if you go to destination, that's where the file should be created and that should have the data from all those uh, files which are in sitting in this source folder um, that file should be created with the date time so that's uh, what we want to do every time we run our package it should create a new file read all the files from the source folder and create a new file with the date time um, let's go ahead and uh, create a package um, come to the ssdt sql server data tools go to the ssis packages uh, right click uh, new ssis package and uh, i can rename this one uh, load all files to single file now first of all we will be creating a few variables uh, because they are very important as you can change the value of those variable by using the configuration um, and they, they give us a lot of freedom uh, so we can uh, control uh, different functionality of our package um, and uh, especially when we deploy in the package to QA UAT and all that the folder paths are different so we have to use these variables in the configuration um, otherwise you will be making multiple copies of your SSIS package uh, not a good idea so use the configuration and create the variables um, okay so add a variable first of all I'm going to create a variable called source folder this is the folder where our files will be so copy this uh, source, source folder path provide it in the value and uh, now we will be creating a destination folder variable and let's call this one string as well and this is going to be string because uh, we are saving some string data and I'm going to change into the destination now the third uh, variable we'll be creating will be log folder log folder why because if error happen in our script as we would like to create a log file in this folder so paste it here and change we have a log folder sitting there so this is the path then you can get different type of files so you don't want to make a change to your package let's say today you get a dot txt file tomorrow you get dot csv file so i'm going to handle that one by using file extension it is going to be string as well and uh, .txt that's what we have for now but we can change that later if you would like just you have to provide .csv and it will be able to read only the .csv files and create a new file for you now go to the next one and we call this one a file extension and file delimiter so see the delimiter can be also changed in the source files so right now we are getting everything with comma but tomorrow maybe we get with the pipe or maybe with tilde so we have we want to give the option okay fine if anything change in the uh, file delimiter we don't have to change as entire package we can simply change uh, the value of this variable and it should be able to handle now more things file name what would be the name we would like to create because we are creating destination file and I'm gonna call this one Tech Brothers. You can also change according to your business. And uh, one more thing, with the destination file, what extension you would like, destination file extension. That's also very important because maybe you're reading the .txt file and you would like to create .csv file or maybe you would like to create the .txt file, your choice. So I'm gonna leave this one .txt for now and we'll come back and test it out. So change the type first and then we'll provide the value. We are pretty set here. Let's go ahead and bring a script task. We double click. Now we will be using a visual C sharp here. You can use the visual basic if you like. Add the variables. So all user variables has to be added here, whatever we have created. Uh, file delimiter file extension file name and then uh, we have a log uh, folder 
and uh, then uh, we have a user source source folder sorry and then that's pretty much it I, I believe we have covered everything uh, let's take one more look because you don't want to go through the errors and find the which variable is missing looks good and come to the edit script now I have written the script already and posted on Tech Brothers IT. So we can copy from there. So I'm going to take you to the Tech Brothers IT. Once you are there on that website, you will be going to SSIS video tutorial. Once this video will be done, I will upload and paste the link for the code in the description of the video. So you can copy from there. Go to the script task. There is a lot of material on this website. So you can use your zip or unzip and also a lot of good stuff related to the Dynamics Excel source and destination. But you are interested in a Dynamics text and CSV files. So that's where we are. And this is the number 10, how to load all CSV or text file to single CSV or text file from a folder. So this click here and it is going to open uh, the post you see that I have a solution pretty much already set here I have written the entire post if you can't watch the video or you don't like my voice fine no big deal you can read the post and follow the all the steps you will be able to create uh, the package yeah. now first of all we will be adding a namespace so we can use different methods or functions from this uh, namespace now let's uh, open the editor and uh, let's make it a little big go to the namespaces and here we need to add that you, you could have copy and paste I'm gonna just type it system.io as we are reading the directories and files and all that so we can use this namespace next we will be coming to the public word main function I'm gonna remove this part why because I have written this part in the script already so I can copy and paste come back here and now I'm going to copy all the way from here to the end till here copy come back to the editor and paste it here look looks good save it and let's uh, click on uh, build and say build and see if any error uh, we encounter looks like there is an error so let's see what happened type namespace ing could be erring or missing which uh, time type space is missing okay see this is when I'm uh, let's let me see if this is the error with the script we copied or we made some error here see this one is a missing in the error a script here so don't worry about that I will fix that after the video so you will not face this issue it should be spring so fine I'm gonna correct that now we uh, we are fine let's uh, save the project and build now with the building that doesn't mean that it will work just fine you can go ahead and run it there are few things we need to take a look maybe the variables I have created they have slightly different name uh, than what are present here so you have to take a detailed look on these ones I will suggest I mean why not take a detailed look and make sure you have exact names of variables they're case sensitive and here let me close this part and now we can kind of compare destination folder okay we have destination folder we have a file uh, ex del delimiter we have file extension source folder we have a file name and uh, we have a destination file extension so we have pretty much all the variables we it looks good so uh, there shouldn't be no issue but always make sure because you will not get error even uh, let's say if I have even one here and you will try to build it it's not gonna go against your SSIS variable and validate in the script so if I will build now it will still say build succeeded you can see here in the bottom left now okay so remove that and we already made sure uh, all the script looks good let's uh, go through the script and see what it is doing um, so we have a, we are declaring a, a variable string uh, date time and uh, just same in uh, the timestamp here so we can use in different places I will be using this one uh, for my file creation um, so in as a file name and I'm adding uh, as a uh, date time to it so I can use that there and also I will be using here in the log um, so I will say error log underscore date time that tells me okay what time this uh, error log file was created what time package ran and all that now I'm declaring some variables uh, so pretty much the same name we have destination folder file limiter file extension source folder file name and destination file extension there and same in the value from SSIS packages to these variables why 
because I don't want to use uh, this whole uh, string uh, in in my code. So by having these variables, uh, they they will be making my code much smaller and uh, more readable. So once you have that, save the values in these variables, and we can use it. Reading file name one by one. Here, uh, I don't really see that this this comment should be there. This comment should be um, not there because uh, I will say building. Uh, uh, file destination file name I will uh, change that in the script as well uh, because you have file full name destination folder backslash file name and then adding date time to it and uh, destination file extension uh, so this is a complete path we are building uh, once we build that uh, here uh, I'm declaring a variable called the int uh, uh, sorry counter type integer and uh, setting a value to zero I need that because uh, I'm looping through the files. So when I loop through the files, the very first file, I would like to write the header. So that's where I'm using this uh, uh, counter. If uh, counter is greater than zero, it means I'm reading the next file. So I don't need to write the header to the file again because destination uh, uh, in destination file, we don't want to overwrite uh, or add the header uh, for each of the file. There should be only one header. So here I'm uh, saying a loop in. Uh, I have to correct this. Uh, spellings here looping through the flat files okay here I'm reading uh, all the list of those uh, files and I'm saying as asterisk dot uh, file extension so I'm reading only the file whatever the file extension we have provided uh, in ca our case we have provided dot txt so it is going to read only text files um, if we have provided a uh, dot uh, CSV for our variable uh, file extension so it will uh, read only dot CSV files um, so that's good part we can uh, filter our files uh, as we want and then uh, we are using for each loop uh, and looping through all those files uh, one after one uh, here I'm using a uh, uh, instance of a uh, stream reader so once I read that I'm creating a new one file and saying okay use this file name uh, as I read right here so this is a complete path of a file okay now I'm uh, declaring a variable called the uh, line of a type string and then uh, I'm uh, then string uh, st sorry stream uh, reader and source file is equal to the this file now once I have that here uh, what I will do mm, simply one thing uh, I don't think so I'm uh, kind of making it uh, this one uh, twice I don't really need that so I can remove this part actually see well when I'm kind of debugging or actually teaching uh, I could have a, a, you know clean my script as well sorry bothering uh, you guys with the time and all that is uh, taking some time but this line of code shouldn't be there because this is a kind of doubling we are already doing there so instance was uh, there we call it source uh, file and uh, we are reading this uh, data from the file name so this is the path complete path for file then we have a stream writer so we can write the data to the file and where we want to write is file full path um, that's good once we have defined these two instances we will use them and here uh, I'm saying uh, enter line counter zero so that also will be used uh, to avoid uh, rewriting of header uh, every time so when we add an uh, sorry when we read a new file and write it well, I don't want to write uh, the header for the next file so I just want to write one time and here I'm saying okay while uh, my line is equal to source dot uh, file that read line not equal to null that means uh, okay keep looping uh, through till uh, um, end of the file uh, and then I'm saying if uh, counter is, is equal to zero and line count is equal to zero that means uh, the very first time uh, that's the uh, condition is gonna be true I will write that uh, uh, line and that means it's a header line from my one of the very first file uh, then uh, next what happened okay if line count is equal to not uh, zero so uh, this is not gonna be true because uh, uh, line count is zero for the first uh, record uh, or the row then it will come back it will add uh, these uh, add one to these uh, variables line count and counter so next time this condition is gonna be false uh, and uh, then it will keep uh, writing the data and then finally it will close the file and then say success uh, now for the next file it come back uh, and uh, okay line counter will be again zero here and then uh, you are going to write okay these conditions are not going to be true because counter will not be zero so see uh, next time we will not be writing header we will be writing only the data so it will uh, keep going uh, 
uh, and keep uh, writing the data from uh, there now here what we have uh, we are we are done with the second file so it will keep looping and in case the error happen it is going to go to the catch block uh, and then uh, write uh, the error log information to the file so it will be in a log folder so great so let's uh, save it close it and test it now uh, I have a script uh, in other um, packages where I have uh, moved these files to the uh, directory called archive you can uh, also use that one go to the previous post and uh, they are there you can just use a couple of lines of code uh, I didn't feel like doing in this one you can use uh, the file system task here at the end or uh, you can uh, simply add uh, that line of code uh, file that move uh, in the script task now let's uh, run the package and see what happened okay success that's a good idea okay now we go to destination and uh, here and we see that uh, this file is created uh, so we can take a look open it and you can see that we have ID and course name uh, and then data from those of uh, both files uh, we do not have uh, this uh, column coming again here uh, so we are only writing the header only one time and then only the data so that's good but if uh, I would like to create CSV file th from this text file what I can do I can simply go back here and say destination file extension instead of uh, .txt I can put the, the uh, .csv so that's good run the package okay completed successfully now we go back here and you see that a CSV file is created let's open it so we can see if the data came correct and we can simply see that ID and course name and the records are there from both of the files so this is how you will be creating a different type of files from text in case uh, you are interested and say no okay I would like to read only the CSV file so I'm gonna change one of the file to the CSV CSV and yes I want to do it now if we go back and change our package because we are interested to read the CSV files and I'm gonna change this one to CSV a new CSV file should be created and it should have only uh, two records also let's say we change the destination file name say Tech Brothers IT courses now new file should be created and it should only read one CSV file from source and create a file for us let's uh, stop the package go here and go to the destination folder and we see here see Tech Brothers IT courses and uh, if you open it it should have only two records uh, because it read only one file so you can see that it has only two records uh, this works awesome uh, and you can use this package as a template uh, and this, with the small changes uh, in your variables uh, you can uh, really create a lot of scenarios uh, from here I hope this video is helpful I will update the script uh, and you don't have to worry uh, while you will be you're watching the video and going back and forth and making the changes so you can just always copy and paste them i appreciate your time and i will see you guys in the next video